Otto, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert, for having me today. Good morning. Now, Otto is the new uh, new Santa Clara County Supervisor for District 3, and he is also the first Chinese American to serve on the board. And uh, this being the Lunar New Year time, it is a good thing to celebrate. Otto, give me an idea. First of all, uh, I want to get into your background a little bit because we like people to know more about the people. But uh, first of all, how was the transition going from being a Sunnyvale mayor and city councilman uh, to a kind of a more regional approach on the Board of Supervisors? Yeah, thank you, Robert. And yes, happy uh, Lunar New Year of the Ox or Buffalo to everybody. Uh, wishing everybody to uh, have a much better year than last 2020. <laughs> yes. Really a bad year. For Let's us. put that one behind us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're so ready for 2021. So yes, <laughs> Ox, we are ready for you. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, so the, the transition certainly has been quite a quite an interesting journey. Uh, I actually served on the Sunbelt City Council a while back. I actually got off the council back in 2012, so that's been eight years ago. Uh, the challenges we had at the time certainly seems much smaller than what we're facing today, uh, not just because of the fact that it's covering the entire county of Santa Clara, which is 2 million people from you know, Palo Alto and Lopitas all the way down to Gilroy, 15 cities in there, but at the same time, we're dealing with this uh, awful uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, and county, of course, having the being the public safety net for public health has to has a front seat uh, to to deal with this uh, this issue. Uh, so I I've been in office now for about uh, two months, and certainly I felt like I've been here for almost a year. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like you know, the files, indeed. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we'll be talking a little bit more about some of the uh, issues you're pursuing, but I also have this feeling uh, that with uh, you know at the local level. Mm -hmm. um, how people grew up, you know, what their upbringing was, uh, their influences dictate a lot about the way they do their job. Uh, give me an idea for uh, your background. Uh, I know a little bit about it, but where were you born and what was your early childhood like? So I was born in the mid 60s in Hong Kong, uh, in the middle of uh, kind of a, a tumultuous time action Hong Kong at the time, just you know, during Cultural Revolution in China. Okay. And so Hong Kong certainly had some riots going on as well during that time, very unstable times. Uh, and uh, my family uh, came to the United States uh, in 1982 when I was 15 years old uh, to basically uh, realizing that that was when you know, Communist China has decided to take back Hong Kong and we were afraid the loss of the democracy and freedom that we are so uh, uh, enjoyed. Uh, and that's why we came to this country. Uh, I came from a Catholic boys school in Hong Kong to Berkeley High School, which is a talk about <laughs> it, uh, experience that gave me PTSD. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, so in all seriousness, this is a great school. Berkeley High is wonderful. It's very diverse and uh, getting me exposed to so many things so quickly and uh, got me to UC Berkeley where I studied engineering. And after that, I actually joined the Navy through the Navy ROTC program, served a couple of years active duty before I came back to Bay Area and went to Hastings Law School. Uh, which is, of course, a proud, proud alma mater of our vice president and Willie Brown and many <laughs> uh, chief justices, you know, there's a <laughs> great jurist who, uh, who graduated from that school. And then after that, I've been practicing laws ever since the last 20 odd years. <laughs> now, there's plenty to uh, mine from all of that. But first of all, what was it like for a 15 year old to go from where you were to coming here and then coming to the Bay Area. What was that like for you? What do you, what do you remember from that time? I, I do recall because a lot of times we oftentimes treat immigrant as somebody coming from a less uh, advanced uh, uh, place. Uh, and, but in my case, being from Hong Kong, we're talking about a city full of 50, 60 story buildings even at that time. Uh, coming here, I certainly felt like I'm, I'm going from a, a busier place than a less busy place, which I thought was interesting. But at the same time, with the change of uh, the study, because in Hong Kong, the, the uh, academic curriculum is far more rigorous. Uh, and so coming here is a completely different approach where it really uh, encourages less, less you know, memorization. Uh, but really open your mind to, to try to explore. Uh, it's a very different type of learning. I really feel like I have the best of both worlds, getting my basics down early on in Hong Kong and then here opening up my mind before going to university here at, uh, at Berkeley. Yes, now I can understand that evolution. What was the military's immediate sort of impact on you in terms of uh, how it kind of changed you as a person? 
Yeah, so um, I actually didn't realize this at the time, but uh, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, actually was in the U.S. Navy for 26 years before he retired. Mm -hmm. And I think that gave me the reason of why I wanted to join the, the, the Navy. Uh, I actually called the, the recruiter when I first got here when I was 16 years old, but the recruiter found out I was too young. Uh, a little disappointed, I said, well, go call the Sea Cadets. So I joined the Sea Cadets for a couple of years, and then when I get to Berkeley, I joined the Navy ROTC program. And and it, it really has been a, a very, uh, edu not only educational, but life-changing in many ways, uh, serving you know active duty on the ship. I was a ship supply officer in charge of the ship treasury. I had like half a million dollars worth of cash in my in my safe for my year and on, on board a cruiser uh, out of Norfolk, Virginia. And after that, coming back to the Bay Area, uh, serving you know, as a reserve officer in the CBs with the aircraft carriers, a supply officer, uh, certainly has been able to 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 uh, help me understand uh, the bigger picture. And eventually, uh, I got deployed to Iraq in 2009 as a supply officer uh, and working basically with the Army for a year. And that's only been a, a very memorable experience, helping to draw down of our troops in Iraq under the order of then uh, the new president, uh, Obama, uh, who uh, made that decision. And so uh, these are absolutely uh, life-changing experiences, you know, dugging mortar attack and IEDs and whatnot, uh, and then coming back to, that was like, you know, after serving as a mayor of Sunnyvale, to be in the middle of war zone. So it's certainly really <laughs> amazing experiences indeed, yes. Very interesting background. Okay, we are going to come back with more from Otto Lee after this. So thank you for uh, being with us today, Otto. And uh, we will talk with you a little bit more right after this break. Thank you, Robert.